much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. My name is Aaron Micklow, and I'm here with Mr. John Feldman. Hello. Feldy. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Aaron? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here with yeah. you. I've been a fan of your band for a really long time. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. We've been a band for a really long time. Yeah, you have. 93. You have. I yeah. would, before we get into talk about Goldfinger, I do want to talk about your career as a music producer, because okay. I feel like that's what you're becoming more known for now. Yeah, 100%. Grammy nominated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Grammy nominated, what, you, it was, your Grammy nominations came from Fever 333 yes. and Blink-182, the that's California right. album. That is correct. Can you talk about how you got into producing? Um, yeah, I mean, I saw a band called Show Off play the Fireside Bowl in Chicago. They opened for Goldfinger, and I'm like, this band is so awesome live. I love the energy. I love the whole vibe. Yeah. I'm like, give me a CD or whatever. They gave me a, a cassette tape. And I guess if you don't know what a cassette tape is, you can fuck off. But it's like, I can get this cassette tape and I put it in my car at the time. And, um, and I'm like, this sounds terrible. I'm like, I know I can do better for them than they did for themselves. So I flew them to LA and I just did better. You know, and we got them signed to a record deal, and that was the beginning of my whole career. It was just wanting to be a service to this band to help them become better than they were. Yeah, that's you know? amazing. And that was the first band, Show Off, and then it was Messed, and then it was The Used after that. And The Used is the band that changed the whole trajectory for me. Like, that, that record just, I mean, I met those guys, and they were just like, it was, it was on. I just knew they were going to change the world, and they did. I mean, Bert yeah. found... You know, Gerard, he found My Chemical Romance. He got them signed to Warner Brothers. And it's like that changed the whole kind of scene at the, at the time. It was great. And definitely. I, was, I feel like I was definitely a part of that, which is pretty fucking cool. Mest is more of like a cult following one. Um, you know, this gentleman here is a big fan. I was like, oh, you produce Mest. And then another good friend of mine is like, oh, have you heard of Mest? I personally am not as familiar with them, but they're a band that people obsess about when they know them. Okay. Yeah. Huh. That's a big one. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He used to come, Tony the singer used to come to every Goldfinger show and just like, he'd be like, what kind of guitar do you play? What pedals do you use? What's your, I mean, he was always so like, involved with like what the sound was and all that he was really engaged with the whole process and we made some great records we had a gold record in japan with mast and i think they're still touring so that's amazing we did something right i think they did just do a show somewhat recently like within the last several months my my other friend that is very obsessed with them okay. was like oh mast is playing and i was like yeah, i'm yeah. not gonna make that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> have fun you made this one yeah i made this yeah, yeah. one um and so blink 182 can we talk about the making of the california record yeah of course i mean uh the aquabats opened for goldfinger for probably eight months back in the day and yeah. travis was the drummer back then and so and I just, I watched our drummer at the time torture this poor kid. And he was a teenager, Travis at the time. And he would make Travis set up some, sometimes on the floor of the club. He wouldn't strike his drum kit. And he would make Travis, and I, I just, so I took him under my wing and I'm like, bro, you're gonna be all right, you know? And he, I let him ride on our bus, much to our old drummers. I mean, he was not stoked on that. He was like, what's this other drummer doing on our bus? But whatever. It all worked out well for Travis. And so I, I was just friends with Travis for ages and ages. I mean, we used to just sit up all night on the bus and just talk about 
girls and love and just everything and just we became homies and so when um tom left they started doing demos with matt skiba and i think they had maybe like seven or eight songs they kind of had written and they were working with a couple other people but they just brought me down to the studio we, we met at crossroads at travis's restaurant yeah. and just had a hang and i'd met mark because we had done um snow core it was blink 182 opening real big fish and then goldfinger headlining yeah so i met all the guys in blink and we were we'd done a few shows with them but i didn't know mark that well so we just sat down and just hung out and just went to travis's studio listened to a bunch of songs and i just i knew we could do better i just knew that they had something really great but the magic wasn't a hundred percent yet and then that i think that same day mark and i wrote bored to death which was like the first single on that California. And, um, and like we wrote that song and then Travis came in and just like kind of finished it with us. And and then, you know, Skiba came in, played guitar and we're like, this is magic. It was magic. And then from that point on, we just kind of worked every day for, I don't know, maybe, maybe four and a half weeks. And we had California finished. It was like people these days after like the whole bullshit with like lockdown or whatever. Like people want to like tinker in the studio for nine months or a year. It's like put out like five albums. Like you don't need to like overthink everything. Yeah. That's not what making music's about. It's about being in the moment and creating something genuine. Yeah. So with, with Blink, it's like we made this amazing album, one of the most proudest moments of my life and, and then we got nominated for a Grammy so that's amazing I mean and that was their first Grammy nomination I feel like I had a small part in it and very grateful to be involved I want, like I, I wonder with that now of like obviously you know Tom has rejoined Blink and, and had the nicest things to say about Skiba. Yeah. But I wonder it's like, it's like oh, why didn't we get a Grammy nomination when I was in it? Yeah, I don't know. Tom's always been the sweetest guy to me. Yeah. Always been super nice. So we'll see. But it's kind of come full circle because you're working with Travis again in the capacity of uh, DTA Records is putting out Avril's yeah. new album. Yes. And you're producing Avril's new album. Yes. You've been working with her yeah. really closely. Absolutely. And like, I'm loving the stuff. Her, the song that she put out with Youngblood, I personally love it. I know it's not maybe for everybody, but I really love it. Yeah. Um, and I saw that you were on set of that music video. Yes. Right? And yeah. You, you I co wrote and produced that song. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very, uh, it's a very tender, heartfelt song. And I, Dom is amazing. And he's like such an incredible energy to be around. And, and it's, we, had the, we had the best time making that song. Yeah. It was so fucking fun. It is, it's just like the emo love song, you know? It's yeah, like, it's, absolutely. It's of that genre. Like it's, Avril does Avril. And I'm like, personally, I'm, you know, like I was like in sixth grade when Skater Boy came out. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's, it was it was my era, and like I'm really happy to see her, you know, making a comeback, yeah. getting her star on the Walk of Fame that you were at, yeah. and helping helping kind yeah. of announce her. Yeah, she's the best. The first stage dive she ever did was at a Goldfinger show. I think we were playing with Sum 41. She was friends with Derek. I don't think they were married yet, but it was like she told me the first stage dive she did was at, at one of our shows. So. I feel like it's come full circle with her being yeah. completely and now that we're working together. She's amazing. They need to teach people though, because um, a few months ago I was at Youngblood's concert at the Whiskey A Go Go. Yeah. And he throws his guitar off stage and everybody catches that. And yeah. I ran up into a stage dive and yeah. nobody caught me. I'm sorry. And then, but Dom being the sweetie that he is, yeah. He's like, are you okay? And grabs me and pulls me on the yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, my pride hurts. Cause it was like all the press was there. And like, it was just like, boom. Yeah. I was like, Ow, that hurt. <laughs> I know I've had that happen. What's that place in Cincinnati called? The Bogarts. Have you ever been to Bogarts? In Cincinnati? Probably not, I don't know. Anyway, it's this legendary <laughs> club. They have these huge PA stacks. And I like, I got up, climbed up on top and I jumped and I jumped off. And it was like, I could see the people start to part. And it was like, <laughs> I was falling backwards down and I grabbed, this dude had long hair and I grabbed his hair. I literally pulled half his hair out, the poor kid. I feel bad to this day, but it was like, I like, I like barely missed the ground. Just like, 
like just holding his hair. It was great. It was like, epic. Now that you're working with him, can you please te tell him to teach his audience of like, guys, they literally, moments before, caught the guitar. Yeah. Like, but not. <laughs> not a human. Like, why do you, they just didn't know what to do. They just looked at me like, yeah, like this, yeah. I'm like, isn't this a punk show? Yeah. Their, their generation of punk, I feel like they don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, I, I, I know that there's a lot of young people that probably haven't been to a lot of shows, you know, to kind of like witness, so I'm sorry. But you're okay. <laughs> you survived. Then on Tuesday, they all left me. I heard she's going out with Charlie. She saw his package. What did she say? Aside from that story, do you have any other good stage dive stories? Because you do stage dive a lot in, yeah. your, in your suits. I wonder, I always wonder, have you ever ripped a suit? I have ripped my suit so many fucking times. <laughs> That's the worst on the road, especially when we're in England or something where everything closes down at six and weekends are just <laughs> closed, you know, and you're just trying, and I've just got this massive hole. And it's what yeah, it is. Because it it's is. either going to be the back or the ass of your pants, right? Yes. It's the back of the coat or the ass of your pants. Yeah, yeah. I was in Germany. We were opening for <laughs> Detotenhosen, which is like the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're fucking amazing. But they don't really stage dive a lot in Germany. And it was like these, you know, 10, <laughs> 20,000 people. They're pogo the, punks in Germany. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They just jump, which is great. But it was like I ran, jumped, and we're the opening act, and no one put their hands up or anything. And I landed on this girl's head. And I heard her actually go, ouch. And then I, I, I sliced, I had to get seven stitches in my chin that same night in Germany. Gosh. That wasn't fun. Then we were in Rio and it was like, I have the monitor box that I jump off of and it was like up there and no one taped it down. So I went to jump off it and I pushed it forward and I had to get eight stitches across my shins because I landed on the barricade with my shin. It's like, that shit happens, whatever. <laughs> it's like, how many punk points do we get for this? Yeah, I don't know. Like 20,000? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I mean, we still have the world record for, I think it's 385 shows Goldfinger played in Yeah, I wanted to so, ask you about that. Yeah. How was that at that time of, I mean, that's a that's multiple shows in a yeah. day. And we're in a band and we're just doing the, the, the like beginning of our career. Like, you know, we've been a band for three years, but hadn't really toured. And this is the beginning of our touring shit. And it's like, it was wild. I mean, I still, to this day, I've had probably six surgeries on my knees, on my neck. It's like th those days were gnarly. I'm never doing that again, yeah. ever. But then with that, like with the morning routine that you do have, um, I've heard that you, you do have a pretty intense morning routine. You uh -huh. run, you box, you meditate, you do your cold showers, you yeah. do your affirmations. Yeah. So how is that, you know, being so, so physical with fitness with all the surgeries that you've had? I have to, if I don't do that shit, I'm gonna fall apart yeah. without question, I'll fall apart. But I mean, it's the idea of like, doing something that my body does not want, like like going in my 50 degree pool is something my body does not want to do, but I do it anyway. Yeah. And I just try and train my mind to sit there for three minutes and just do it. And afterwards, my knee feels great. My mind feels great. It clears everything out. When I'm in that pool, I'm not thinking about like whatever job I'm not getting or whatever, like my wife doesn't want me to do or whatever bullshit is going on. I'm just thinking about get the fuck out of the pool. And yeah. it's like, I'm in the moment. I'm just in the moment. And it's awesome. Afterwards, I feel like, cleansed yeah it's just a great thing and working out's like treating anxiety and depression that's what working out is 100 percent. definitely you know, it's mental health shit i have to work out or else i'm in my head and i'm that i'm one of those overthinking guys in a band just thinking oh it's not good enough or i'll start writing a song this is amazing and then 10 minutes later this is the worst piece of shit i suck i'm fucking awful you know all that thing that like if i if i don't work out i'm that guy I have heard you say in other interviews that it's obviously today with social media and like the white noise of that, it's hard for bands to get noticed versus like back then you would go to the Dragonfly and yeah. flyer everywhere and just kind of get your name out there that way. What advice would you give to artists now? You know, being that you've worked on both sides as a musician yeah. and as a producer. Yeah, look, I think, I, I think you never give up. I mean, that's the main thing is just not 
ever stopping. Just yeah. keep on going, no matter what, you know, and create music that you love. Don't try and follow some trend or do something that's whatever's popular, like do something that you love. Because people know when you're doing something that isn't real for you. People know that shit, yeah. you know, and it's like, if it's real for you, it's gonna be real for someone else. And it's not like, you know, it's not necessarily talent. It's more about drive, it's more about ambition. It's like, just keep fucking going, you know? And um, I know as far as marketing and promotion, that's not, definitely not what I do, but I, at the time I'd go to Kinko's and I'd make, you know, 10,000 flowers. I think standing inside, outside of a queue at whatever, like if you're, if you love Billie Eilish, just go stand outside of a queue at Billie, Billie Eilish and, you know, play guitar, sing songs and, and like, just, you know, hand out your, you know, Instagram handle or whatever and just be like, you know, this is my music, check it out, play yeah. wherever you can. I agree with that. I mean, you know, with obviously a lot of artists that I speak to doing my show, a lot of them, they they just want they want the good shows they want the good tours already and it's like get out there and do the legwork in that in between yeah. and that's the way to get it too is like not everything is going to be handed to you on a platter and you have to get out there and not be afraid of those notes yeah my dream is for every band i work with to headline the reading festival and it's like i've worked with artists that are like i don't want to play a show i just want to have a hundred million plays on spotify i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you if you write a song you want people to sing back this, that's the whole point for me it's the whole point is yeah. the live show and it's like i'm not that interested like as a in a business capacity i'm not that interested in the spotify listeners or you know you know the TikTok followers it's like what how many t-shirts did you sell in front of 100 people that you played did you sell 30 t-shirts if you did those those people will be there for every show the rest of your life yeah. the people that bought those shirts that's the shit that matters is like merch is way more important to me than the numbers. And I know labels are so interested in the metrics of the analytics of what TikTok looks like and how to use that as a marketing tool. And it's a great marketing tool, but it can't be the driving force. The music has to be the driving force. Yeah, because it's like you see all these songs that um, pop on TikTok. Like I, you know, I got on TikTok and I, I do love the platform. It's done uh -huh. a lot for me, but what I don't like is I'm like, why do I look at some of my favorite punk bands to go use their song? And it's like, it's not gonna benefit me to use it because it has like two pl two people have used it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, in the, in the punk world, it's like a lot of people, they're not on TikTok and maybe they're losing in that way, but they're out, like you said, playing shows, selling merch. But then there's this whole TikTok world where it's like, well, this song is viral right now. And it's like, some of those songs suck. Yeah. The song is fucking terrible. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just like the idea that's, it's the last, it's such a short period of time. It's like these nanoseconds in, in the span of someone's career to have like a viral song on TikTok. And it's great. And yeah. I'm sure it generates, you know, conversation, but like to have a career, there's gotta be a body of work. And I still believe in albums. I still believe in music, you know, really ultimately. And, you know, a lot of the artists that I love, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I love the 1975. I think they're incredible musicians and yeah. they make great music. And, um, and my, you know, my daughter doesn't know who they are. I mean, all she listens to is TikTok and it's interesting. Like, how do we cry? And I know that they're a massive band, but it's like this this new generation of finding music through TikTok is just interesting. It's interesting to watch. It is. It's 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 weird, you know, to be in like this in between of like, oh, well, it used to be like this, and then now it's like this, and we're somewhere here, yeah. and it's like how the two meet. Like even even tonight, you know, meeting uh, someone that was like a young young punk, like under eighteen, but yeah, yeah. I see you on TikTok doing your hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like such. But then they're here too at the same time, and it's like we're coming into this where the worlds are merging, kind yeah. of. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's interesting. Um, I do want to talk about. 2016 Mike Herrera from MXPX joined yeah. Goldfinger. Mm -hmm. How did that come to be? Um, I think we did some shows with Mike playing acoustic in Australia. He was just opening for Goldfinger playing acoustic and we just really hit it off. And he's 
I mean, I want to say he's the nicest guy in the music business. He, he's arguably it's like top three nicest guys I've ever met. And yeah. he's just like him, Josh Dunn, and uh, and Martin and Mark Hoppus. Those three guys are like probably the nicest people I've ever met. And I just like really bonded with Mike. And and when Kelly left to join, um, Kelly's our old bass player. What's his fucking band called? Anyway, he looks like Mariah Carey now. He's in some metal band, which is great. For, good for him. He loves that shit, you know? He's got, he played with us a couple months ago and it was like, um, it was so great. We're all in suits and we're all tight, you know, haircuts. And he's just like full on like Christmas songs. It was, it was awesome. Um, but Mike replaced him and that's how it happened. It just kind of worked out. Okay. And then can we talk about the current lineup? Like obviously Charlie's still in the band. Yeah. Um, Charlie left for a long time and okay. he came back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard being in a band. I mean, yeah. no matter how you break it down, if you're in a van and, and, and you're like arguing over like, well, I want to hear Radiohead, I hear your Slayer. It's like, you're just trying to figure out what is, how to reach that middle ground. And, um, and yeah, Charlie was, we had some, uh, you know, there was a moment when we were making Superman actually, where he was like, I'm going to quit the band if you put these horns in this song, in, this end, in the end of the song. And I'm like, Dude, I gotta put the horns in the song. It's a fucking ska song. It's yeah. like, what are you gonna do? Um, so let's talk about what else is coming up next for you personally and for Goldfinger. Obviously, um, you're doing the When We're Young. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to go? I'd like to. Yeah. I'd like to. I mean, I'm going to say like a lot of the bands weren't really my thing, but I would I would love to go because some of there's a handful on there that I do Who? really enjoy. You guys. Thank you. Blink-182. Yeah. Green Day. Yeah. Um, Sun 41. Hmm. Like know? two songs. Like two songs. Okay. Avril's on it, right? Okay, Avril's on it. I no, no, Avril's on last year. No, because she was last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fuck with that. Veronica's are on this year. I love the Veronica's. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I'd have to scrutinize the bill more, but those, okay. are, just, those are, are the your, ones that jumped who's out. Who's your favorite all time? I mean, Green Day is one of them. They okay. are. Like, Green Day was probably one of the very. Which album? Dookie was it for me. Okay. My brother had it, and I didn't know. Like, I remember Basket Case thinking it's basketball case because I was yeah. like seven years old. And I was like, exactly. I like this song. One of my lies, <laughs> Kerplunk. That's my jam. That's a good one. Just one of my lies. So fucking good. Yeah. That guy's such a good writer. That dude is the fucking Lennon McCartney of this generation. Yeah. That one guy. He's so fucking good. Um, God, I love Kerplunk. I saw the Kerplunk tour at the Whiskey. He had these, these green dreadlocks and then, because I love the replacements as well and they love the replacements. And so they switched off and Trey Cool sang a song. Um, what song is that? Some, is it an s and song or something? I forget off Kerplunk. But anyway, I fucking love Green Day so much. Yeah. How do you not? I mean, the songs are so good. They're really, they're just, you know, I, it was, it's like they kind of went through it of like, oh, they weren't cool. And then it's like everybody still secretly liked them when they weren't cool. Yeah, I and, don't know about it. They were always cool to me. But yeah. Um, but I would, when I was working at Nana, that punk rock shoe store that I worked at, like all, I literally played, I would play Dookie when that album came out because was, I was such a fan of um, Kerplunk. And then Dookie came out and it was like before it blew up, I just, I was like, this is the fucking greatest album ever made. I mean, I really believe that. And I played over and over and over, just studying in that bass line on them. Um, do -do 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 -do. It's so good. Yeah, I will say, I, the brief time in high school I thought I wanted to be a musician, it was Green Day that made me want to play guitar. And I went in with Pat and I was like, no, nah, I don't like practicing. I'm not doing this. Yeah, thing. fair enough. <laughs> not for me. I like being on yeah. this side where I just talk to the musicians. <laughs> yeah, Nimrod's so good, though, too. Like, there's so many great. Yeah albums you know i i, I kind of like as i became the producer that i am today like i just i don't really listen to a lot of i just don't have time i'm always listening to mixes or i'm just writing music and i'm just kind of studying the shit i mean i always go back to the beatles to study their you know because they're the best writers of all time and in my mind in my mind george martin's the greatest producer of all time and so yeah. i study his production but it's like I just, I missed like that era, the, the uno, un dos, tre, uno, dos, tres or whatever. Yeah. I kind of missed a lot of it, you know? And that was after American Idiot, right? I don't know when those came out. I kind of discovered them really late, but my favorite one is is the green one with Billy on the cover. There's that's, okay. that's my favorite one. I need to go back and, and listen. Yeah. I'm sure they're great. No, they're, they're good. Those are good ones.
so is that it? What else is coming up for you besides that? Oh, sorry. I, I went off <laughs> we on got, a We got distracted got talking about Green Day. I got the craziest fucking ADD. No, no, I, no that's yeah, good. Yeah. I, um, love, I love Green Day. It's nice to, to nerd out on them. Maybe we'll just play all Green Day covers tonight. No, we're not going to do that. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm finishing the Veronica's album, working with this girl, Charlotte Sands, who's amazing. I've done a lot of shit with Dom, you know, lately, and he's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know this kid, Swaco, who I've kind of been on and off with. You I've know, heard for the of last him. Year and a half. He's awesome. Ian Dior is great. We've been working a lot together. Yeah, he's he's great. Um, I love him so much. Yeah, yeah. How do you not? And he's <laughs> yeah. such a cute. He's such a great guy. Isn't he, he's like little though. He's, he's not that little. Oh, I don't no. know. I don't really know. Yeah, I just yeah. I just like his songs. So I don't he's know. just young. Okay. That's all. So yeah, a bunch of bunch of good shit. So cheers. Well, I'm gonna close out with that because you do have to get going. But thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Hey, it's John Feldman. This is Last Rockers TV. Let's get it. Thank you.